Welcome everyone uh, to another video on uh, machine control here. Uh, so today we're going to talk about current measurement. Uh, now we have been talking about the permanent magnet synchronous machine control uh, and then we uh, went into different sub, uh, uh, blocks or sub modules that are within a field control system for a, a permanent magnet synchronous machine and we uh, try to understand how each of them work right uh, in among them current measurement is one of the important sub units or sub systems because that tells us uh, the orientation or, or that allows us to control currents or apply the voltages such a way that we generate the electromagnetic field in the right orientation which will enable us to generate optimal torque output okay uh, so in order uh, for to to align the current so uh, regulate the currents at the needed level if we are doing a feedback control we do need current measurement okay the alternate strategies are uh, there are aes actually would be to do a feed forward control type strategy you are not directly measuring current however uh, you are applying a voltage based on uh, you know a machine model that you would have but uh, in this case we are looking at uh, feedback control where we are regulating output current and in order to regulate output current we need to measure current okay uh, and in as you remember in our field oriented control scheme the currents that we regulate or the pi controllers were implemented on the rotor reference frame currents however we can't measure rotor reference frame currents directly uh, so what we do is we measure phase currents in the machine or uh, we use some array of methods to measure or get an idea of the phase currents in the machine and then we transform those phase currents to our rotor frame currents which we call iqs and ids right uh, and that's the uh, measure the, the currents and and the reason we need the current is for proper field orientation okay and able to generate the needed amount of torque uh, in looking at types of sensors okay so we'll try to walk through different architectures and the advantages disadvantages in each method now before we do that uh, let's take a brief look at the types of sensors that are available okay uh, so the first primary type is uh, shunt or resistive type so basically what we do is if you have you know three phases like that we basically place a resist a very small value you know maybe 0 0.05 ohms and that changes depending on the amount of current and how much voltage that we are going to measure uh, and then uh, the resistor when there's current flow there will be a voltage drop across it right we'll have some form of a differential amp uh, that is measuring this voltage and feeding this into our uh, microprocessor or to the adc that we're going to sample and uh, that's one method we call them a shunt or a resistive uh, type sensor the alternative type is hall effect based and uh, hall effect based so further subdivides into different categories i don't i won't, don't want to get into that discussion here uh, the two primary types uh, that i've seen so far in terms of hall effect is the lem modules uh, which is you know uh, it's a uh, type of a sensor that you would pass your wire through for example so this is uh, this is something like that and then you would pass your wire your phase wire through that and there's there's a hall effect a mechanism inside the sensor that senses so much current the direction of current and then uh, provides you a voltage based or proportional to that current which acts as a measurement that's the lem module this is a little bit expensive uh, typically 
$20 range roughly uh, and it could go higher even uh, and then there's uh, even a little bit more cheaper sensor uh, that's using Hall Effect sensor uh, Hall Effect technology it's called uh, well it's manufactured by Agro uh, and this is one one of those sensors that you can come across they come in they're built in a chip very cheap uh, I haven't used many of them uh, in applications but I have tested it a couple of times so there is an alternative uh, type of a sense and there are other semiconductor manufacturers that have a similar chip that has the same functionality or almost the same functionality okay so uh, the the three techniques uh, that you're going to come across if you are doing uh, R&D and then but it's not a limit I'd say LEM modules are better uh, they have very good noise performance as well as easy to work with uh, when you're prototyping uh, but you know if cost if your projects are cost sensitive then you might think about this uh, either a shunt or a uh, this current sense chips type of a device uh, and by any means I, I have no association with Pro or any other semiconductor company uh, this is what I have worked with uh, so that's why I'm talking about them. Okay, all right. So uh, now, how many sensors do we need? Right. So if you are thinking of a three filament magnet synchronous machine, uh, we're gonna need no three phase currents. Right. All the currents that are flowing in all three phases. So ideally, uh, having three sensors will be very right uh, what the the disadvantage here is the cost so adding another sensor is coming at a cost so we have to be a little bit careful more careful uh, so do we really need that added sensor or not okay uh, so the alternative is is using two sensors now uh, if you think of a balanced machine we can uh, get the information that we get in a three sensor scenario just using two sensors because we know that for a balanced machine I, IS plus IBS plus ICS is equal to zero right so if this condition is valid then if we know IA and IB and then we can find IC using this relationship okay uh, typically in applications what i have seen mostly is uh, people measure all three currents but the third current that you measure is form of a diagnostic and it's used for uh, fault detection and maybe to verify you have uh, all the current flowing in your system uh, and then let's say you had a failure at one sensor then you can switch to the alternate uh, the, the the current sensor and uh, you know get rid of the measurement on phase b altogether okay uh, so those are uh, that's the two sensor approach and uh, the the next is a single sensor approach okay there are applications that use a single sensor current measurement either on the high side or on the low side and now this will have its own disadvantages you know you're gonna and advantages of course uh, primarily there's some processing involved with uh, the single sensor approach which we will look at at the very end uh, when we compare the the different types of sensing methods okay so there are different approaches and you can find a lot of literature on the details of uh, what uh, each of them can do okay now when we go into the different sampling uh, uh, different sensor type regardless of what you use uh, when you sample is something that we need to pay attention to okay? because we have primarily if you are thinking of a, a PWM or switched uh, PWM based inverter that means you are you are not you are not uh, running or, or 
within the PWM period, part of the time it's off, the device is off, and part, only part of the time the device is on. So in that case, when do we need to measure, or when can we measure and obtain an accurate measurement is something that we need to think about. Okay, so uh, that in mind, let's take a look at how we place different sensors, and then we can try to further study, okay, when do we need to measure current and uh, how does the PWM associated, associate with the, the current measurement, okay? So here are uh, uh, different places you can uh, place your sensors. So if you are measuring phase currents, this is where you would place your sensors you it, they could be shunts or they could be a lamp module right so it could be a shunt like that that's in series or without uh, damaging or placing your sensors in the middle you can do is you can place or you can pass your uh, wire through uh, through the lamp module there okay uh, that way you don't have to uh, have or place a sensor in the in the in line with your wire or with the motor so we have a couple of options so i'm just going to draw it like this the standard rotation so you can place three sensors uh, there okay uh, and let me try to pull up a picture i'm trying to see if there's an image that i can show you yeah maybe i can uh, all right so that's uh, one method then if you the other common method is to use low side shunts okay so we have three low side sensors which are measuring the currents on the low side end okay uh, there is a disadvantage to use low side sensing uh, particularly if there is a fault on the high side for example if let's say uh, there's some fault that happens in the machine and this phase gets shorted to okay very simple fault and in that case the low side sensor does not see that current that short circuit current so which is disadvantageous uh, because now you cannot shut down your drive in time right so it could burn up part part of the drive or all of the drive so it could damage your system uh, so so that that's one disadvantage now the alternative to that is to go towards high side sensing okay so you have uh, a high side set of sensors you could have in either of these cases you could have three or two sensors depending on what you want to achieve uh, and it could be a resistive pole sensor uh, and then in the high side case of course you're going to avoid or you you're going to be able to detect any faults that you see uh, now uh, the the issue here is now you are at a very high voltage so you have to manage that when you uh, provide that information to your microprocessor you may have to shift uh, whereas in this case you are measuring with respect to zero right so so that's a disadvantage in in case of a shunt if it's a lamp module i think you'll be fine uh, you're getting a differential uh, voltage out okay all right so so high side low side and then the single shunt so single shunt case uh, typically they will either go with the high side or a low side and what happens is with the low side shunt with a single shunt we need to work with our PWM scheme because we know when we turn on each switch, right? So with knowing that, now we can relate the current for or current to that leg, right? So for example, let's say we are telling the microprocessor to close the switch and at that point, the current flowing through the single shunt is associated with this leg right we had two legs turned on then we know the current flowing is for both of the legs okay so so that way now we have some 
tell them, you know, when you implement this single shunt mechanism or the method, you'll have to have some algorithm to decipher this information so that we can associate them to each phase, which can be, you know, used for field-oriented control. Same goes for HISA, okay? Uh, but in practical drives, you'll see a combination of them depending on what you want to achieve. Uh, sometimes people do low side and then one DC shunt. This way, you know, you get the low side measurement as well as you can use the high side for uh, possible fault detection. Okay. Uh, so it depends on your cost, your budget, what you want to achieve performance wise. Uh, that's the, uh, and that, that's a design criteria. Okay. So let's, uh, with that, I want to show, show you a simulation of what the different currents look like uh, using a simulation. Uh, and we can try to see with PWM what those currents look like to get an idea, you know, in case you see these uh, when you are in the lab. Okay. All right. So let me uh, switch, turn, let me off my document camera and I'll share my screen with you. Okay. All right. Good. So I think you can see uh, see my screen here. So I have a very uh, very simple model. I know it's a little bit crowded, but uh, this is a field oriented controlled uh, field oriented controlled PMSM drive with an inverter stage. Okay, with an inverter stage. So we have a gate driver here. We have some position sensing, and uh, we are applying PWM to each of the switches. And then we have we have current flowing. Uh, this is generating back EMF. Uh, and then we have this uh, closed loop system here, right? Uh, now here we get the opportunity to look at phase current on phase A. Okay, phase current. This is phase current measurement. And then the second, the low side current. I'll show you the low side current. And then we have the high side current on, on the on the uh, leg first, which is associated with phase A. Uh, and then we have the DC link current on the positive side. Okay, so we we can actually compare them and see what they look like. Okay, so this is what we are looking at. This is basically the position want to show one revolution of the machine. If there's a slight transient here at the very beginning. Uh, now, if you look at this, this is your phase current. So if you're measuring phase current, this is what you are measuring. Okay, you're basically measuring the actual current that's being applied. And you can see that there's a small ripple, not that bad, right? So you can freely measure the current on the phase uh, in the case of a phase current measurement, okay. Of course, if you if you are careful, if you want to be a little bit cautious of noise, uh, try to measure, you know, at you know either at the middle or the on the peak or the valley every time. Uh, but it's associated with PWM, and you'll see that. And then the third graph here. This is the low side current. Okay, so let's uh, let's zoom in. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so you can see here, this is how the low side current is varying. That doesn't mean this is what we are going to measure. Okay, so what we want to measure is we want to measure, so there's some transient, right? There's some transient here, but what we want to do is we want to measure once the current is settled. Okay, once the current is settled, you can measure uh, at that point. So we don't want to capture any trends in the system. We want to measure the steady state value of the current. Okay, steady state value of the current. So we want to leave some time after turning the switch on and then measure the current. Okay, all right. So let's. So that's the low side current, and if you compare the low side and the high side, there is somewhat of the. Uh, is that, yeah, there's a phase shift, right? Yeah. So it's 180 degrees out of phase. You have to consider that 
in your uh, process in your algorithm to to associate it with associate it, it associate it properly with the phase okay uh, and then when we look at phase current you can see see again you need to settle you need to wait for until it settles and then take the measurement uh, and then this is basically high side current this is high side current okay so high, this is a high side current uh, it, it's a, it's a little noisy so that's why uh, you know there are certain disadvantages but if you align it properly with the switching pwm uh, you can try to measure and i will discuss it in the next slide uh, in the next page very shortly okay so just to give you an idea of how the different currents will look like of course the phase current looks the best but it comes at an added cost okay all right so with that said we'll go back to our page uh, to our writing page here okay uh, so we looked at what the different currents look like okay let's try to uh, understand this current measurement okay so here we are considering low side case and to the top we apply this PWM signal to the bottom switch inverted signal of that of course we're going to leave some dead time right we're going to leave some dead time between the trains to avoid any shoot through okay uh, now in that in under this scenario we are looking at phase current and the current through the bottom switch okay? so when the top switch is on current through the phase is rising right because we have a positive voltage applied and then when the switch top switch turns off and the bottom switch ooh, wait 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 did i miss this up Uh, top switch on yeah I think I did a uh, mess this up so this inward so this need to be let's make sure top yeah this is bottom this is the bottom switch this is the top switch okay so when the top switch on the current is rising okay and then when the bottom switch is on then the current is falling okay uh, and then what we think of the average current is something like that right and that's what we want to get an idea of if you are only looking at the bottom switch the current through the bottom switch this is what you're going to see right the returning current the inductor has energy stored and it's going to pass through that bottom switch if you are to look at the top switch you're going to only see this half okay uh, now when we take the measurement we need to measure around here because at these points there will be some ringing some oscillations okay so we want to avoid those ringing and oscillations so we want to time ourselves selves with respect to the pwm so that we measure there okay of course this is with an edge aligned pwm which means we are using a, a sawtooth like that if you use a, a triangular wave your pwm measurement scheme is preferred at the peak because that's where everything will align okay uh, so keep that in mind this is for an edge aligned me method and then again if you are measuring on high side then of course we want to measure because we'll see only this half. We're not going to see this half, right? So then we need to measure right somewhere around there. Okay, and then pass that information to our control algorithm for the oriented control. So whatever other type of control you want to do. Okay, so that's for the current measure. Now, so the finally before wrapping up and uh, looking at the different methods, some advantages and disadvantages here. 
so if you have phase me current measurement of course you know that's going to be very accurate and nice you're going to get the direct phase current measurement of course it's going to be at a cost and then you might need to do some filtering to remove a pwm noise okay uh, low side it's with respect to a zero volt with respect to ground which is advantageous but uh, we are sacrificing the ability to detect faults here okay uh, and then transients are going to be present in both the low and high side when you use a shunt so you have to manage that and filter uh, and with the high side case we have the advantage of being able to detect faults uh, you know like uh, shorting power supply to ground or chassis something like that okay and then of course single shunt measurement uh, this is kind of a different class of uh, sensing uh, like we discussed it's cheaper hardware cost cost right uh, and it also uh, helps us in the gain and matching for example in in sensors you might see some mismatch in terms of bias gain offset uh, so since in the single shunt case we are using the same sensor for all phases there is no matching required single however of course have processing extra processing you'll need some module modification to your uh, modulation strategy to be able to detect and capture that current measurement and that might introduce some torque ripple on your uh, output torque so that trade-off that you have to uh, look at okay so uh, so in this in this video we looked at the different current sensing mechanisms so feel free to let me know what you think and then we can get into uh, you know additional material if needed all right thank you